Fall in, troops. Good evening. We're live from LZ Bunker. This is the Veterans Live Show. I'm Ronnie Yembers, your host. Served in Vietnam since 1967, December to 1968, December, with the 101st Airborne Division, 1st to the 502nd Infantry. Tonight, we have a very special guest, John Rowe Jr. from Norwalk, Connecticut. Served with B Company of the 501st Signal Battalion, which provided... Co- Communications for battalion, brigade, and division level. Be a very interesting evening. And so we're going to the bunker and see how John's doing. And there he is. John, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born right here in Norwalk, Connecticut in 1947. And uh, grew up here, went to school here. Um and then uh, by the time I was 14 years old, I, uh, I had a dream to go in the Army as a paratrooper. Uh, and uh, that's what I did. Um, I was determined to do it. And uh, I ended up in the 101st Airborne Division. Uh, didn't really know where I was going to go uh, after jump school. Could have gone to the 82nd, 173rd, uh, and uh, it's a good thing I went to the 101st because I had uh, gotten uh, a Screaming Eagle tattoo uh, <laughs> before I went to jump school. Uh, um, and uh, the uh, the instructors at jump school, the Black Caps, uh, noticed it right away, and uh, I did an additional number of push-ups compared to most of the other troops. Gotcha. Let me tell tell us about your uh, AIT experience with uh, com- with Signal School. And where was that? That was at Fort Gordon, Georgia. I went to Fort Gordon, Georgia, right out of basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey. And uh, I spent about 16 weeks at Fort Gordon uh, learning. 16 weeks? That's like 16, four months. 16, yep, exactly. For, 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 for AIT? Yes. 16 weeks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Tell us what went on at the school. So we learned uh, communication uh, equipment, uh, radios, uh, portable radios like such, such as the PR twenty PRC twenty five, uh, FM secure, um, which is a, an encrypted form of FM radio, and uh, and uh, and also radio teletype. Interesting. And after that, you went directly to uh, Fort Benning, Georgia? Yes, I did. I was, uh, yep. I, was, I was a holdover for a while. And then uh, someone from, uh, from personnel came to me and said, uh, are, you, are you supposed to go to jump school? And I said, yes, I am. And they said, well, we have another slot for you. If you don't feel like going to jump school, we could send you to the U.S. Embassy in Tehran, Iran. And, really? Uh, yeah. And uh, I said, no, I want to go to jump school. I didn't yeah. even hesitate. So. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I got. I know that holdover experience. I, I was held over for two months in Fort Jackson in uh, South Carolina there, waiting to go to jump school. And uh, here comes a video of the 34-foot tower that you went through, and so did I at jump school. Here we go. Okay, that was some experience. Uh, first time we it was like going to some some amusement park, you know. I know. So, what do you think about that that experience? I I, I found the thirty four foot tower a little scary uh, at yeah. first. You know, um, you know, you're jumping out into midair, uh, tr- trusting your life to a cable, you know, <laughs> or harness, but. Right. You know, that was uh that was taken at Fort Campbell, me and my yeah. Frank La- Laika, uh on thirty foot thirty four foot tower, little have a little bit of a break, so we took some kind of uh, picture for that. Here we go, and here's a two hundred fifty foot tower, and tell us about how you felt jumping out of that thing. I I felt a little more at ease, believe it or not. I don't know why. Um, I guess uh, 
as we were being hoisted up to the tower top, um, you know, at, um, I guess it was reassuring to know we were already hooked up. You know, I don't, I don't know what it was. All right, here we go. We're going to go to a video about that now. Jumper going off the two again to the position with the feet head up the parachute, keep your head and eyes on the horizon with your feet knees together, knees flat and back exposed in the bottom of your feet to the ground, elbows locked, resting on four sets of riders, thumbs up, knuckles to the bottom, jump out number two on your feet, yourself off, three from the tower, pull your front set of riders, keep it to your chest and take command from the off side, down the ground, close your feet together twice if you understand. Right, stop out number two. Alright, one pull your left, left, left. See me when you're done. Hold, hold, hold. Hold what you got. Hold what you got. Hold what you got. Hold what you got. Hey, John, I don't think all our landings were that soft, right? And not without any wind. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> boy, oh, boy. That was like a piece of cake. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, I went to Coney Island, and they had a 180-foot tower down there. You ever go down there? No. No, I never yeah, did. That was great. I couldn't believe it. I When I saw that thing for the first time, it, it's like talk about early flashbacks. But they have they had one at, at Coney Island, which was pretty, pretty good. So – I just remember you said you had some you you're afraid of one and not the other. But don't forget courage courage isn't the absence of fear, it's the control of fear. So like you said, you felt safe, you felt you know, and the other one you felt a little more uh exposed to danger. Okay. Oh, I gotta tell you one about when I was in jump school, a lot of guys pulled their reserve just for the heck of it. Just to keep the D ring as a souvenir. And if you look at the lower right-hand corner of this picture, you'll see the reserve is pulled. It's a perfect day. No reason to pull a reserve. The guy did not have any problems, and he did the souvenir trip. So there you go. Teacher always teaches something. And, Can I tell you one more story about the 250-foot tower? Go for it, man. Go. We, uh, we went through jump school with other branches of the service, including Navy SEALs. And the Navy SEALs climbed up the 250-foot tower one night and hung a U.S. Navy sign up there. <laughs> the next morning, uh, they were told to open ranks and uh, form formation over here and uh, do some push-ups. So I always had a, a great sense of humor. So I was laughing, you know. So what happens when you laugh? You think it's funny? Join them. So <laughs> I'm over there. <laughs> <laughs> doing push-ups with the Navy personnel, and I'm still laughing. And they said, you, you still think it's funny? And I said, yes, I do, Sergeant. 25 more. <laughs> so. There you go. Hey, I want to thank Colin for Colin out there for uh, posting a little memo there. He said, check canopy. What was that? Was that the uh, first thing we did once you opened your eyes? As soon as you, yes. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, check canopy. Right. Uh, yeah. I understand that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check canopy. But, all right, I had a little experience on my first jump uh, 50 years almost later. So uh, let's get down to the fact of uh, November 26, 1967. You, you got you arrived in Vietnam, right? Yes. And uh, – you provided individual support. To, I mean, provided support to individual units hmm. on each level, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, I was always concerned that the enemy knew they were listening to us. But what was your experience with that? Well, the Prick 25s weren't uh, encrypted, so they could hear voice conversations over the radio field radio and that was always seemed like it was at the platoon company level uh sometimes battalion level um so uh so they could hear that because it wasn't encrypted right yeah but the other stuff they couldn't decipher no that at the higher level no they they couldn't uh they couldn't decipher it 
Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. The one thing about that Prick 25, I remember I, my company, B Company at first, 50 Deuce was involved in a friendly fire incident. Mm -hmm. Nine, four Deuce rounds fell short and took out one third of our company. Um, back at the base, I heard, and I heard this years later. I didn't know that the microphone got jammed on. So they heard all the aftermath of the bomb hitting, the screaming, the yelling, and the whatever was else. Yeah. And uh, I guess the uh, communications have their pluses and minuses, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's uh, – during the Tet Offensive, I heard you rode shotgun a lot. Yeah, I uh, rode convoy shotgun uh, on deuce and a half going out to uh, – Phuc Vinh, uh, Song Bay, and uh, and Dong Ha, or uh, their Kuchi. Okay. And, yeah. And then when you went up north, tell us about uh, the weapons that you carried. I carried, I uh, had an M16, an M79 grenade launcher, and a 45 automatic. And uh, I uh, I eventually, I got rid of the 45 automatic. I, some lieutenant in my company took it. And... Uh, and then the M79, I pretty much uh, was stuck with that for the whole duration. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah, I, I had to give mine up, too. I didn't like a 79. Yeah. I uh, never good in a firefight. Uh, close combat, you don't want to – even a 45. I don't care if I had three 45s with two hands. I'd take the M16 over one of those weapons any day. To get yeah. a position, a little bunker, a fortification, or do something, pop some smoke or something out there, fine. But the M79, that was tough. And I finally got rid of it to one of the newbies who came in. Yeah. And uh, Okay, so now we're going to go to uh, the uh, – when you got – you talk us about – tell us how your job changed, though, John, once Tet began. Um, I was doing things that weren't signal. You know, I was doing uh, – uh, like down in Benoit area, I, I, uh, I was doing convoy guard when we got up to Camp Eagle. Um, I was, I wasn't just stationed at Camp Eagle. I, I moved around a bit, uh, went out to Camp Evans and, uh, and Dong Ha to do you some. Became, you became kind of a gopher. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us about Camp Eagle when you arrived there. Uh, it was pretty uh, empty when we arrived there. It was just uh, no uh, no concertina wire, no bunkers. So uh, so we ended up doing a lot of sandbagging and building, and uh, we uh, we built uh, several of the bunkers on our side, and uh, then the uh, they finally put concertina wire around the base. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I actually went there only one time. Um, I saw on that map they had China Beach uh, on there. Did you ever get to China Beach? No. Really? No, I yeah. did not. Yeah, and then you you uh, you said something to, to me earlier in the evening about it seemed as though Camp Eagle got a lot more attention from the uh, NVA and Viet Cong rockets and mortars than uh, Benoit did. It, it it did, I think, yeah. So so that you just were a much bigger target? I think we're a much bigger target, and uh, and there was a greater presence of, of NVA units up north. Okay, gotcha. And how about that uh, terrible incident with the C-130? That was down at Benoit Air, Bay, at Benoit Air Base, and that was the first night of Tet. And uh, a, a C-130 uh, took a direct hit from flying. Uh, it was flying. in the air. No, it was on. It was it was on the runway. Okay. <clears throat> so it was either a mortar or a rocket round. I'm not sure what. Uh, wow, that's yeah. uh, that's kind of uh, sad, especially if it had people on board. A lot more than that. Yeah, I I don't know if anyone was on board or if the aircraft was just parked there on the tarmac. All right. How about – tell me your experience with uh, Colonel Cushman. Colonel Cushman was the 2nd Brigade commander, 
so he was your CEO as well. I, I know. Yeah. Um, and we uh, we just provided some of the communication to his headquarters, and uh, I was involved in that. And uh, and then he had communication links to the individual battalions within Second Brigade. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah he was flying around up in the air with the day. Yeah. Uh, we got hit with that friendly fire incident. The uh, he uh, passed away uh, recently, about a year ago. I know he did. Yeah. Yeah. A nice guy. Actually, I met him in uh, Bronxville through my own private company for some reason. I knocked on his door one day and to do some the work and uh, an estimate, and he, Jack Cushman opened up the door. It was like crazy. I met him. I in met Bronx, him in West, Bronxville. Yeah. I met him at West Point at the. The Bastogne weekend at yep, West yep, Point. Yeah. And uh, I stayed overnight, I think it was both Friday and Saturday night that time. And we uh, we ended up going to the uh, uh, Sunday brunch at the Officers Club. Okay. Which, uh, I don't know if you ever did that, but nope. that you was nice. a statement. That was good. So there was a group of us, probably a little over a dozen of us that were walking in. And the lady at the door, didn't want to let a couple of us in because of the dress code. And then L Lieutenant General Cushman came behind us. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Right. He said, these people are with me. And the lady, she was, she was kind of a, uh, not such a nice person. I would I say, uh, he's <laughs> another for one. She another was following one. The rules. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, General Cushman pulled a little rank on her. He says, uh, these people are with me. They're coming in. He said, and you know who I am, right? She says, yes, sir. I know who you are. <laughs> the uh, one thing I still have to say to that is, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, he he was he became division commander, you know. Yes, he did. Yeah. 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 That was interesting. He worked his way up through the ranks over the years. Great guy. Yeah, yeah we talked about that. Hold on a minute, John. Thank you very much. We're going to show you people out there. Another video or some pictures, and uh, here it comes. Up, oh, yeah, sorry about this, but it's this is my famous uh branding <laughs> material. It says, I don't always jump from a plane while in flight, but when I do, my intent is to kill all enemies. Stay airborne, my friend. Okay, John, thank you very much. Everybody out there in the hinterland, thank you for watching. We'll see you again next week. Signing off from LZ Bunker. We need people, by the way, for interviews, and uh, we'd like to have anybody send message us on uh, Facebook to uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, whatever you did, pilots, CQs, cooks, uh, tankers, you name it, uh, guys who worked on a battleship, uh, a loaded B-52 bombers, whatever it is. Give us a – send us a message, and we'll, we'll talk, and you get on a show, and we'll go from there. Signing off from LZ Bunker. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and welcome home.